Microsoft Excel is a powerful spreadsheet application that is used by many professionals for data management. In this video, I'm going to get you up to speed with Excel in 10 minutes. I'll see you in a bit. Hi, and welcome to Public Health Resources, where we provide useful tips for students, residents, and teachers to make them useful in solving our health problems. In this quick video, we'll be covering launching the Excel software, its graphical user interface, how to enter and format data. Then I'll also introduce you to the Excel formulas and its functions. We'll get our hands dirty with some quick data analysis, and then we'll try out some charts. Wow, that sounds like a lot for 10 minutes. Let's go. Launching the Excel software. There are several ways to launch Excel. If you already have Excel installed on your computer, then just search for it and launch it. Otherwise, you can use the free version of Excel online by just going to your browser and typing excel.new and boom, you're ready to start using Excel for free. Thank you, Microsoft. Now, when you launch Excel, you'll be greeted by this homepage, all right? Let's just click on the blank workbook uh, to get started. The Excel graphical user interface. Well, the topmost part is called the title bar. This is where you will see the name of the file that you have opened and by default it just says book one excel calls each file a workbook all right and within this book we have sheets so this work area that we are seeing is called a worksheet so if you see below here you see where it says sheet one all right and we can have multiple sheets in one workbook all right awesome now the next important area i want to highlight is the ribbon all right this is the main band that you see just after or just below the title bar all right, it displays groups of related commands within the tabs. All right, so here, all we are seeing here is the ribbon that is belonging to the home tab. So within the home tab, we have groups and these are related commands that are put together. Uh, so we can see these are groups and each button is a command that instructs Excel on something that it needs to do. All right, now below the ribbon is the formula bar and this is where we'll be writing any formula that we have to run. Now, the last thing we'll be talking about is um, the spreadsheet itself that we can see. And this is essentially made up of rows and columns. All right, the rows, we can see they are numbered and the columns are lettered. Now, the intersection of a column and a row is called a cell. And each cell has a name given by the column letter followed by the row number. And so this cell that we're seeing here is G7. And we can see his name in the tiny box up there. And that's called the name box. All right, now enough of this graphical user interface. Let's enter and format our data, shall we? Entering and formatting data. So we have this data that we collected from 10 medical students in a quick survey to determine the fasting blood sugar levels of medical students in Amadou Bello University Zaire. Their ages, gender, and fasting blood sugar status were as follows. So to enter data, let's just go to any cell and start typing. Um, let's go to cell uh, B2, all right? And let's enter the column header as serial number. Awesome. Now we'll notice that this has exceeded the space for a cell, but no worries. We can increase this space by simply moving the cursor in between columns B and C. And we'll see the cursor turns to a black cross we pointed horizontal edges, meaning that we can move this horizontally, all right? So we'll drag till our serial number is perfectly fit. Awesome. Next, we move to the next column to enter the age, all right? So we'll enter the age column header there. So we can either move the cursor to the next cell uh, by just clicking on, on that cell and typing age. So we'll just call this age, okay? All right. Or we can move to the next cell by tapping on the tab uh, button, all right? So awesome. Let's enter um, gender here. Yes. And then let's press the tab again. And uh, this time we'll enter fasting blood sugar, but let's just write it in short FBS. So for the first respondent, his serial number is one. All right. Then we'll press tab. Uh, he's 27 years old. We'll press tab again. Then um, male. Then we'll press tab. And then he has a fasting blood sugar of 5.7 millimole per liter. Awesome. Now let's enter the next one. Okay. Serial number is two. All right. The age is um, 19 and gender is male. But now see what happens when I start to type M. It automatically suggests what it knows based on the previous entry um, entered, right? So this is such an awesome feature that Excel has for quick data entry. All right. So I'll just hit on tab and you see it gets populated automatically. All right. Fasting blood sugar here is 9.9. .9. And now I'm sure you've gotten the gist of the whole data entry process, right? So let's just, I'll just quickly fast forward to enter the remaining data to save time and yeah. whoa. We've got just like four minutes left, all right? And we still have a ton of stuff to cover, all right? I hope we can make it. Let's go. Excel formulas. Now, one of the most powerful features of Excel that sets it apart from all other softwares is ability to work with formulas and functions within each cell, all right? You can create any type of mathematical calculations using any type of common math operators. Now, let me show you what I mean. Let's say we want to calculate the average age of these respondents, all right? We know our formula for average is the sum of all the ages divided by the number of individuals. 
Easy, right? Okay, so in Excel, to write any formula, you begin by typing the equal to sign. So let's say we want to compute the sum of ages and put value here in this cell, okay? So we'll just click on that cell and write our formula into that cell. So we start by typing equal to sign. And since we want to add all the ages in cells C3, C4, C5 up to the end, we just type that into the formula. Very simple, okay? Now notice that when I type C3, it highlights the cell that corresponds to C3. Then we put a plus sign, then we put C4 plus C5 plus C6, and we do this all to the end. When we finish writing this formula, we just press enter and boom, we have our sum of ages right here. Easy peasy, all right? Now, let's now divide this sum by the number of respondents that we have to get the average. And remember the number of respondents that we have are 10, all right, there are 10 students. So we'll type again in this cell, we'll put the equals to sign, and then we'll say cell C15, that's where that data is, divided by 10. Um, the fourth slash here you see is the divide symbol, all right? So, and then we we'll press enter and boom. So we can label this as average age. So whatever formula you can think of, you're just limited by your imagination. Just put that thing properly into a cell or multiple cells, and you come up with super amazing stuff of your data. All right, but there's a problem. Hmm. What if you don't know the formula? What if you want to compute something but you don't know the formula? Does Excel have any inbuilt formulas that um, we can make use of that will make our work easier? Yes, absolutely. Excel's got you covered. Enter the Excel functions. Excel functions are inbuilt formulas that allow you to do super amazing stuff. So you can transform and do a lot of computations with your data with these Excel functions. And there are several ways in which you can do these functions. I'm just going to take on the simplest method here. There are so many other methods that you will see that I'll be showing in my um, subsequent videos. Now, let's say we just wanted to compute the average age again. All right, now instead of going through that long process as we did before, Excel has a function for that. So let's go to the ribbon. Okay, now under the formula tab, we can see a whole library of functions and they're all grouped together. All right, so there's the auto sum, there's the financial, there's the recently used, there's logical, date and time, trigonometry, all sorts of awesome functions. All right, now let's just click on the drop down that is under the auto sum and select average. Good. Now, all we need to do now is to select all the cells that have the ages just like this, and then we'll click on enter and boom. All right, we have our average. Easy peasy. All right, so I'll leave you to try out the hundreds of different functions that Excel has. All right, so we can save time. No time to check time. Now, let's move on to descriptive statistics. Now, Excel has just so many super cool features and add-ons. One of them is the data analysis tool pack. This allows you to do different statistical analysis. So how do we get there? We go to the data tab and click on data analysis right over there. All right. Now, in this dialog box that pops up, you can see several types of statistical analysis. We're just going to click on descriptive statistics and then click on OK. Now, in the descriptive statistics dialog box that pops up, all right, let's just click on this black arrow in the input range field. And then we'll select the range of all the cells that has our fasting blood sugar. Then let's check off labels in the first row because we have our label there. And then let's also check off summary statistics, the confidence level of the mean, the k largest and the k smallest. And then we'll click on OK and boom. We see the mean, the median, the mode, the standard deviation, the variance, the ketosis. Oh my God. The skewness, the range, the minimum, the maximum, the sum, the count, the largest, the smallest, as well as the confidence interval of the mean. Super awesome ultra descriptive statistics. Ha. All right. You see why I love Excel, right? Now tell me, is this is normally distributed or not? Please put your responses in the comment section below and please do not ignore this. All right. Now this tutorial will not be complete without charts. Drawing charts in Excel. Drawing charts in Excel is easy peasy. Just select the data you want to represent um, in form of a chart and then click on the insert tab. Under this charts group here, you'll see a lot of different charts. You'll see a bar chart, column chart, pie chart, so many different chart types. Now, but remember our data of age is a numeric data. So let's just select statistical chart and then under there we'll select histogram. So let's select the first one. Awesome. And boom, we have a simple histogram. Easy peasy. Now, to add axis titles, let's just click on the plus button over here, all right, and check off axis titles. While here, we can also check off other things like grid lines and the chart title, okay? Awesome. So on the y-axis there, we'll just type frequency. And then on the x-axis, let's type the age of respondents. And we have a cool histogram. I just so love Excel and so should you. Now, in 10 minutes, I've been able to bring you up to speed with Excel and you are good to go. Okie dokie, Adichoki. Now, if you've gained value with this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you like what you see, consider subscribing to this channel and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified of my future videos. In my next video, God willing, I will be going into details on how to do advanced data analysis with Excel. But until then, peace.